Okay, so if you've been tinkering with a home lab, uh, especially getting into Proxmox, you've probably hit this point, right? That common dilemma. How do you actually keep certain VMs or, you know, LXCs properly isolated from everything else on your network? Yeah, like maybe you're running a, uh, let's say, a high-risk quarant container. Yeah. And you definitely don't want that anywhere near your sensitive stuff. Exactly. Or maybe you just want, you know, better segmentation for security. Maybe performance, too. And that whole path, it inevitably leads you into the world of VLANs. Right. And then, bang, the big choice hits you. PFSense or OPNSense. So today, in this deep dive... That's our mission. We want to kind of cut through the noise, unpack the real differences between PF sets and OPN sets, specifically looking at them for managing these virtual networks inside a virtualized home lab, you know, like in Proxmox. We'll dig into what they can do, where they differ, and hopefully help you figure out which one uh, genuinely fits your way of working, your tinkering style. And what's really interesting right off the bat is just how capable both of them are. Insanely capable, really. Yeah. From what I've seen, they're almost like twins under the hood. They share that FreeBSD DNA um, and just a ridiculous amount of overlapping features. Exactly. So it feels like the question today isn't really, can it do VLANs? Because, I mean, clearly they both nail that. Mm -hmm. It's more about helping you, the listener, figure out which one fits your personality, your needs. Right. Precisely. And, you know, this isolation we're talking about, it's absolutely crucial if you care about security and control in your lab. Seriously. Just think about it. That torrent container example, mm -hmm. it's inherently high risk. It's constantly connecting out to, well, frankly, untrusted peers all over the Internet. Right. Now, if that container is just sitting there on the same slat network as, I don't know, your Trinas box with all your important files, mm -hmm. you're basically giving the whole Internet a potential backdoor right to your most sensitive data. The risk of a compromise, pivoting. It's not just theoretical. It happens. That really puts it starkly, doesn't it? So, okay, let's translate that risk into the solution. How do VLANs actually work to create these like separate apartments you mentioned within Proxmox? What's the basic idea stopping that lateral movement? Great question. So VLANs, fundamentally, they're a way to logically chop up a single physical network into multiple virtual networks. Think of it like giving each service its own private locked off apartment instead of, you know, cramming everyone into one big messy dorm room. Oh, OK. I like that analogy. Makes sense. And that proper isolation means if one thing gets compromised, let's say that torrent box does get popped, the chance of it spreading across your network and hitting something critical like your NAS, it's much, much lower. So it contains the blast radius, basically. It's, exactly. It's really a foundational piece of network security, even in a home lab. Sounds great in theory. But... Yeah. Okay, here's where I think a lot of home lab dreams hit, well, a pretty common and frustrating wall. How do we actually do this in Proxmox without needing, you know, a full server rack and enterprise switches? And what are those first hurdles people usually stumble over? Ah, uh, yes. The million dollar question. Yeah. And it often comes down to a very basic reality check about your physical network gear. We see this constantly. If you're running on a standard unmanaged switch, you know, the plug-and-play kind you buy off the shelf. Yeah, the cheap ones everyone has. Right. Well, your VLAN dreams, they pretty much die the second that traffic leaves your Proxmox server. Like yeah. one user online put it very bluntly. The unmanaged switch does not support VLANs, full stop. Wow, okay, full stop. It's critical, and it's something people often overlook, and it just completely derails their whole plan for isolation. So hang on, even if I'm super careful inside Proxmox, setting up the tags, VLAN 10 here, VLAN 20 there, the moment those packets hit my my dumb switch downstairs, Oof. they're all just mixed together again. One big happy family. Yep. One big broadcast domain again. All that careful tagging inside Proxmox becomes meaningless outside the host itself. Okay, that is quite the wake-up call. So if I want proper network-wide VLAN enforcement, what am I looking at hardware-wise? Do I need some fancy Cisco thing? Not necessarily super fancy, but yes, if your isolation needs to go beyond just the server and cover your whole LAN, like your Wi-Fi clients, other wired devices, you're going to need at least a basic managed switch. Something that understands those 802.1Q VLAN tags. Or is there another way? Or if you're really clever or maybe limited on hardware budget, you might get away with some very specific network interface card mapping directly on the Proxmox host itself. Right. But that gets complicated fast. Right. And this is exactly where 5th Sense and OPN Sense 
sense come into the picture. Because Proxmox built-in Linux bridges. They're great for basic connections, but they aren't smart enough to enforce rules. They can't do things like, okay, Torrent VLAN, you can talk to the internet, but absolutely no talking to the NAS VLAN. Ah, okay. So the Linux bridge handles the tagging, maybe, but the firewall VM handles the rules between tags. Precisely. You need that intelligence layer, that firewall brain. Yeah. Which is what PeeveSense or OPNSense provides. Got it. Okay, before we start picking them apart, let's just level set again. Okay. Both of these things are, well, they're beasts, right? Yeah. They can handle a ton of networking stuff. What are some of the big capabilities they both offer that a home labber would care about? Oh, yeah. They're incredibly comprehensive. You get all the essentials, obviously robust VLAN tagging, which is why we're talking about them. DHCP server functions for handing out IPs automatically. Mm. NAT, so all your internal VMs can get out to the internet easily through one main IP. Really granular firewall rules to lock things down tight. VPNs. Absolutely. All the popular VPN tunnels, WireGuard, OpenVPN, IPsec, super important for secure remote access back into your lab. Plus, they both offer powerful intrusion detection and prevention systems, IDSP, to actually look for and block malicious traffic patterns. Oh, wow. okay. And even sophisticated traffic shaping, if you want to prioritize bandwidth for certain things or limit others. So really fully featured and specifically on the VLAN front, the core of this discussion, they both use the standard method, right? Critically, yes. Mm. Both PSNs and OPNSense fully support the industry standard 802.1Q VLAN trunking. That's the magic that lets you run multiple isolated virtual networks, those separate apartments, all over a single physical network cable plugged into your server. Okay. One cable can carry traffic for you know, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, all separated. So like we said, it's not about can they do it. They both can. Exactly. It's about which one feels better to you. And that often starts with the user interface, doesn't it? That can be a huge factor for people. How does Festens feel when you log in? Festens. It really feels like a classic network admin tool. You've got tabs across the top, lots of drop-down menus for everything. If you've ever worked with older enterprise firewalls, maybe Cisco ASAs or something similar, you'll probably feel pretty comfortable there. Familiar territory. Yeah. I saw someone on Reddit say it pretty well. PFNs is a lot better laid out. It's functional, maybe not flashy, but familiar to experienced folks. Okay. OPN sense, though, that presents quite differently, right? I keep hearing modern UI. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. OPN sense definitely have a fresher, more modern look and feel. Usually navigation is down the left side. And it has this fantastic built-in search bar right on the dashboard, which honestly can be a lifesaver when you're trying to find that one specific setting you changed six months ago. Oh, I could see that being useful. Yeah. And the contrasting Reddit quote was, OPN sense updates are more frequent and it has a nicer interface. So it definitely aims for a different aesthetic. So if we boil that down, OPN Sense looks nicer, maybe feels more current, but PFSense might feel more logically organized or just, well, familiar if you're coming from a traditional networking background. That's a pretty good summary. It's kind of like choosing between, I don't know, a brand new Tesla with a giant touchscreen and maybe like a reliable old Toyota pickup truck, you know, inside and out. Huh, yeah, something like that. Both get you there but the driving experience is different. Okay, interesting. What about updates? I hear this is where they really diverge philosophically. Oh, it's a big one. OPN sense. They pride themselves on shipping updates fast. You'll yeah. see security patches, new features, UI tweaks coming out really regularly, Yeah. sometimes weekly even. Yeah. Plus they do major version releases every six months. Uh -huh. So it's definitely for people who like living on the, you know, the bleeding edge, people who want the latest stuff now. Okay, fast and frequent. What's the P-Sense approach? PSense takes its sweet time, much slower, much more conservative update cycle. But the payoff is usually rock solid stability, which is why you see it used a lot in enterprises or places where downtime is just not an option. Because like the saying goes, nothing breaks on a Friday night. <laughs> exactly. You update less often, but when you do, you have a very high degree of confidence that's not going to blow up your network. Mm. I saw one comment that kind of stuck with me. Adding complexity doesn't necessarily increase security. That's a good point. And you could add to that, adding updates too fast can definitely increase headaches, especially if you're not prepared to potentially troubleshoot things more often. Right. So it's that classic trade-off again, latest features versus maybe more hands-off stability. A very clear trade-off, yeah. yeah. You choose what matters more to you. Okay, fair enough. So putting the update speed aside for a second, how do they compare when you want to add extra features, plugins, add-ons, that kind of thing? Yeah, good question. When it comes to extending functionality, OPN Sense really leans into its strong plugin-based model and makes it really easy to like bolt on extra capabilities. 
things like Zen Armor, which is a pretty powerful next gen firewall engine for deep packet inspection. Okay. Or A Proxy, which is a really popular open source tool for load balancing traffic across multiple servers. The whole OPN Sense ecosystem feels more modular, maybe more community driven in that sense. If you're the kind of person who loves trying out new toys and expanding what your firewall can do, mm -hmm. OPN Sense probably wins here on flexibility. But PFSense has its own extras too, right? Yeah. I know people use things like PFBlocker NG for ad blocking or Squid for web caching. Uh, absolutely. And those are very capable, very popular packages on PFSense. Mm -hmm. They work great. But just in terms of the sheer breadth of easily integrated plugins and maybe the modernness of some of those add ons, OPN Sense often feels like it has a slight edge in flexibility and choice. Gotcha. More modular, maybe more variety on the OPN Sense side. Generally speaking, yeah. And, uh, just a, qu a quick side note for the real network nerds out there listening, IPv6. Any difference there? It's a niche point, but yeah. While both support IPv6, the general consensus seems to be that OPN Sense tends to have fewer weird quirks or issues when you get into really advanced or complex IPv6 configurations. Okay. So you're really pushing the boundaries with IPv6. OPN Sense might be a slightly smoother ride. Just something to keep in the back of your mind. Good to know. Okay, so shifting gears slightly, but still really important. These are obviously powerful tools, technically. What's the general feeling out there in the community? What do actual users say about using them day to day? That's always insightful, isn't it? Mm. We said the community chatter often highlights the practical realities. Mm. And yeah, we see strong opinions. Like one user just laid it out there. You need a firewall. Mm. You definitely want to put in a BFSense OPN sense for firewalling and use it to manage VLANs behind it. Pretty direct. Yeah, it speaks to that fundamental need. Don't rely on just your ISP router or something flimsy. Get a real firewall in place. And then there's that classic debate. It always comes up with virtualization. Should you put your firewall in the same box as everything else? Always. And someone had a good take on that, too. You really shouldn't have everything in the same box. But unless you are directly hosting public services, you really don't need to worry excessively. So context matters. Exactly. It's about your personal threat model. For most typical home lab setups, Virtualizing your firewall inside Proxmox, it's perfectly fine. It's common practice. Saves you buying another physical box. Right. And just hammering home that updates versus stability point, another user summed it up really nicely. If you want the latest features, OPN Sense. If you want long-term stability, PF Sense. Can't say it much clearer than that. It really does boil down to your tolerance for change and tinkering versus your need for something you can set and mostly forget. Okay, but here's a really critical point. It's about the physical network layout, the topology. It got captured perfectly by this one user's question they asked. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not seeing, even if you put XSense, PFSense, OPN Sense in a VM, how you'd easily enforce it as the network gateway with that AP access point hooked up to the switch too? Ah, uh, yes. That hits the nail on the head for a common trap. That's a fundamental challenge, isn't it? What does that question really mean for setting this up? It means exactly what we touched on earlier. Your network topology is hugely important. You can't just virtualize the firewall and assume magic happens. Don't virtualize blindly. Your virtual firewall needs to be correctly positioned logically so that it actually sees the traffic it's supposed to control. It needs to be the gateway for those VLANs. So if my Wi-Fi access point or maybe another computer is plugged into that same dumb switch and it bypasses the Proxmox host where the firewall VM lives. Then your firewall rules for traffic between VLANs might be completely useless for those devices. The traffic never hits the firewall to be inspected or blocked. The enforcement just breaks down. It breaks down. Topology matters. Alone. Okay, super important point. So let's bring it back to the practical steps. Someone's listening now, they're nodding along, thinking, okay, I get it, I need this, I'm ready to try it in my Proxmox lab. Huh. What are the basic practical steps to get PSNs or OPN sense running with VLANs in Proxmox? Okay, let's do a quick overview. First step, obviously, install PFSense or OPN sense as a virtual machine inside your Proxmox environment. Straightforward enough. Second, you need to create a VLAN aware Linux bridge in Proxmox. Usually it's something like VMBRO or VMBRI1. You tick that VLAN aware checkbox. Okay. And crucially, you assign that bridge to a physical network card, NIC, on your Proxmox server that is physically connected to your managed switch set up to handle VLAN trunks. Managed switch. There it is again. Great. Escape it. Yeah. Then step three, inside Proxmox, you go to the settings for each VM or LXC you want to isolate. And in their network settings, you assign the VLAN tag. 
So you'd say, okay, this torrent container gets tagged 20. My TrueNAS VMs gets tagged 30. Maybe my regular management stuff stays untagged or gets tagged 10. So you tag them in Proxmox first. Then what? Then the magic happens inside your firewall VM PS sense or OPN sense. That's step four. Inside the firewall, you need to tell it about these VLANs. You'll typically add virtual network interfaces, one for each VLAN tag you created, like VLAN 10, 20, 30 on top of the main interface. Okay, so the firewall now understands the tags. Exactly. Or sometimes you configure it as VLAN sub-interfaces on one main trunk interface. Different ways to do it, same result. Yeah. And then you create your firewall rules. This is the core of it. You go to the firewall rules section and say, allow traffic from VLAN 20 torrents going to the WAN internet. Oh, that's right. Block traffic from VLAN 20 trying to reach VLAN 30. At, no. mm -hmm. Allow traffic from VLAN 10 management to reach everything, maybe. You define the policies. That's where the actual separation happens. That's where the enforcement happens. And optionally, step five, you might set up WireGuard or OpenVPN right there on the firewall VM for secure remote access into your lab. Makes sense. But, and I know we sound like a broken record, but it's that important, this whole beautiful setup relies on. It relies on that physical managed switch. If you want those VLANs and rules to actually apply across your entire LAN, <laughs> including devices not directly virtualized in Proxmox. Like your phone connected to Wi-Fi or another PC plugged into the wall. Exactly. If those devices connect through an unmanaged switch, they likely won't respect the VLANs correctly, or the firewall won't be able to properly segment their traffic based on those rules. Unmanaged gear just, it won't cut it for true end-to-end -end VLAN segmentation. Right. It's the cornerstone. Got it. So to wrap it up, give you the quick takeaway, the sort of TLDR version. Okay. Hit me with it. You're probably leaning toward OPN sense. Good. Well, if you like that modern UI, you want the faster updates, you're interested in the plugins and flexibility, and you genuinely enjoy tinkering in your home lab. You're the kind of person who maybe enjoys breaking things and fixing them on a Saturday afternoon. Huh. Yeah. Maybe. If that sounds like you, OPN Sense is likely a good fit. Okay. And the other side. Conversely, PF Sense is probably your better bet if your absolute top priority is rock solid stability and those slower, more conservative updates. If you're already familiar with its classic layout and you like it, or maybe if you think this setup might eventually grow beyond just a home lab, perhaps into a small business setting. You want something that's tried and tested, maybe feels a bit more enterprise ready. Exactly. If you're the person who wants to set it and forget it for the next three years, Palm Sense often aligns better with that goal. Okay. So at the end of the day, despite all the nuances, both Palm Sense and OPN Sense will absolutely handle the core job of VLAN isolation in Proxmox just fine. Absolutely. They both have the core capabilities. The choice really just boils down to your personal preference. Yeah. Your tolerance for change versus your hunger for, you know, shiny new features and maybe a slicker interface. Well put. It's about matching the tool's philosophy to your own approach. So here's a final thought to leave you with as you mull this over. If the actual effectiveness of your sophisticated virtualized security setup, your PF Sense or OPN Sense firewall rules, your carefully planned VLANs ultimately hinges on the perhaps less obvious capabilities of your physical network hardware, like that managed switch. What other invisible dependencies might be lurking in your current setup or maybe the network infrastructure you're planning to build? What other assumptions are you making that might be waiting to surprise you down the line? 